In this video, we're going to take a look at how we could create a title screen. It's not a tutorial. This is more me showing you some things that you can do. What you should do is follow a really good tutorial on YouTube uh, by either GD Quest. That's a good one. Um, maybe Heartbeast has a few UI tutorials. There's plenty of others out there. If you type in Godo UI menu, you'll find some really good ones. Some of them are a bit old and maybe the guys doing it didn't actually know how to use some tools in there like the animation player. So I recommend maybe you watch this first, see what kind of things you can do and uh, then go and find out how to use the UI editor. It is quite deep, uh, it's quite complex and it would take me a long time to go through and I don't think I need to. There's plenty of existing resources out there and so I'll show you what I've come up with and show you how I did it. So in here, there is also, we're going to look at uh, adding volume control. So I'll show you how to add the volume controls and you can make the UI and the code, put the code into yours. So this is what it looks like at the moment. If I run this, it'll show up here. If I click options, it shifts over to here. I click that, it goes back. Um, these do actually work, although I have muted the audio from recording because it's really loud and I can turn it down. Uh, the SFX should work, but I haven't tested it. Um, and full screen, this does work, but I shouldn't have it ticked at the start. So if I tick it, it'll go full screen. And if I untick it, it'll go um, there. So I can go back. The quit button works. The start button doesn't work yet. I'll add that as we go. So in here, rather than tell you exactly how I made it, I'll just show you what I've done. So I do have a script on this, which we'll look at later, but you can add an empty script to the control node. Then I've got a margin container, and this margin container is set to the full rect, which is going to say, take up all the space that it can. Then I've got a center container. This center container keeps everything centered. Uh, so if I turn off, if I turn off this menu, then the title screen is just centered. If I turn off uh, the title, the menu is centered. So it keeps everything centered there. Then in the center container, I've got an HBox container. Now this organizes things horizontally. So if I turn off the label, the menu's still there and it's kind of in the center because it's in a center box. So this center container is keeping the H box container in the center. Then, so my title is there and that's gonna stay on the left. It kind of organizes things from left to right. And then I've got another center container. The reason I put this center container here is I'll just show you if I put it like that, it puts the menu at the top, which is not what I want. I want it in the center on the right hand side there. So I put that in and then I put a VBox container. So a VBox container organizes things vertically. So top, bottom, middle, wait, top, middle, bottom. And I've just put some buttons in here. Now the way I styled these buttons was um, I've given them a font and I'll talk about fonts in just a minute and I put them as flat. I'll zoom in on them. And without the flat, you see this horrible default button there, which I don't really like. So I'm just gonna make it flat. So it's just gonna show the text. Also the font that I picked is not the best font. And so it kind of in, starts at the top instead of in the middle. Um, that may be another setting I have to play with. So I've got three buttons in here. Now I also have another menu that's over here. Now, I would probably need to play around with these a little bit more and set up some styles for them, but for now, they work fine. And it's a similar layout. I've got a center container that keeps this here as a V-box. And so each of these things, the V-box contains, I'll just remove these so you can see it. So one H-box is that top bit. It contains a label that says SFX and a sound slider. Well, it's actually just called an H slider, but I've renamed it to sound slider. And there's a few settings that I had to play around with here. For example, the alignment for the H box I'd set to end. If I set it to begin, goes all the way over there. I want to set it to end for me. You can play around with these until you get something that you like. Um, there is it's an error there, but I'll fix that in, in a minute. This one here, H box container, again, the label and the slider. Now for these sliders, I had to actually go down to rect and I had to set a minimum size. So I set a minimum size of 200 
and that worked pretty well. Um, this label is just a checkbox. I've set a minimum size for that checkbox as well. You'll see what happens if I don't. It kind of looks funny. Not everything lines up. So even though it's just a checkbox, there's a minimum size for it. The checkbox is really small. And to make that bigger, I would need to make either a custom style like this here and have my own custom checkbox, which I didn't really have time to do. So I haven't done it, but it does work. And then lastly, I've got an options button. Now this options button here, um, I thought I had good, I thought I had a custom uh, margin on it, but it looks like I don't. Um, so it's just gonna be stuck there. And that's my whole menu. So I've got these two things here. I'll probably call this main menu and I'll call this one uh, options menu. So there are two different things there. So I'll just close these so we can see what else I've done here. So I've got a parallax background now. I do have a video on parallax background, but the sound went really janky. So I'll just show you how to do this here. Um, I've also completely rejiggered my world up here. So it looks completely different and I'm not using a background in here. I'm just using an alternate tile set, uh, which just picks a random block when I paint with it. So I'll go back to here. So this parallax layer, the way that this background worked is I set a parallax background. Uh, that's the parallax background layer. And then the parallax layer. And then this one is called one background.png. Now the name doesn't matter. That's just what it was called in this parallax background pack. And you can find this pack on itch.io. It's called dark edition parallax background. It's a pretty good one. There's a whole bunch on there and usually they're pretty free. So this one was called background. So I put that at the top. So it works kind of from top down. These are the ones that are going to be furthest away. So I set these up like this here. Now for each image, you're going to have to play around with some scaling here. So if I open this up, this image was only 314 pixels wide, but my resolution for my screen is 1920 by 1080. So I had to do some scaling and I just kept it simple. So the background here, for each of these backgrounds, for the transform, I scaled it seven times by 11 times. It's a little bit bigger than the scene, but it doesn't matter because it's a parallax background, it's gonna be okay. I also turned off centered so that it didn't appear up in the back left there and set the position to zero, zero. So that was for each of these things here. So I did it for this one as well. Uh, scale seven by 11, centered turn off, position zero, zero, etc. For each parallax layer, I had to do some mirroring. So what I needed to do was mirror it. And this number here is, here's where it gets a little bit mathy. I needed to find out the size of the background. So it was 314. And I needed to multiply that by the scaling. So you can actually just type it in. So I know it's scaled seven times on the X. So I can type 314 and then the multiply sign by seven. And that'll give me that number. Then I just pasted that into all the others. Now, the last thing I did was set the scale for the motion for mirroring. So the scale for the far, far, far away, I don't actually want it to move, so I'm gonna set it to zero on the X. It's not moving anywhere on the Y, so we don't need to worry about that. Then the here, I've set it to point 0.1. Then as we go further down in the layers, I just increase this scale of the motion, point 0.2, point 0.3, skipped point 0.4, I don't know why, point 0.5, point, well, let's go point 0.7, seven, or point 0.8. And so when I run this, you'll notice that as I hit these, and I'll show you how to do it in a sec, the background changes, okay, and the foreground changes and so on. So, but it changes at like a different scale. Yeah, get those animations done now. So you'll notice that I've got an animation player and a camera 2D. So I put camera 2D in and I've set its position to be 960 by 540. That's if your screen resolution is 1920 by 1080, which it should be. Uh, I've also set this camera to be current. And I just want to get through this camera bit before I talk about the buttons and the 
uh, sound menu. I may actually do that in another video because it's getting a little bit long now. Um, but this camera, the animation player here, is I've got an animation that says move to options and move back to main. I've also got one that says start, which all it does is keyframe the position and auto start just in case the camera is in another position if I've moved it away or whatever. Um, but so that's just going to start. It just has one keyframe on it for the camera position at the proper place. But camera move to options. If I look at this here, it's keyframed there. And then if I move along to half a second, it's keyframed to this position, which is 960 plus 1920. I can just actually type it in. So 960 plus 1920, if you're really bad at maths like me, and it will do the calculations for you. So there's the animation called move to options. The animation move back to main is identical, except it starts over here, keyframe there, and then at half a second, it's keyframe back at 960 by 540, like that there. So how does this, how do I actually get it to work? Well, with the buttons, if I look at the options menu buttons, to just hide this parallax background. I can't hide it. Uh, so I'll go to options menu, no main menu and options button. I've got a signal here and this is where the code will come in effect. So you'll need to add that script if you haven't. And when it's pressed, it goes here and we say animation player dot move to options. And then the back button, which I haven't pulled it back over here, but I will. Uh, the back button, has the same thing on button pressed animation player move back to main now the audio things i'll have a look at in a different video oh it's actually no i can do it in this one i can show you how it works it's not going to take too long and i've got these sliders so these sliders here i have set them as a minimum value zero and a maximum value of one, not 100. The default value will be 100, but if we do that, we're going to have, it's going to convert um, it to a really weird sound uh, because of the way that the decibels work. So maximum, we want one, minimum, we want zero. Step, I've changed it to 0 0.01, so you can have like 10 steps. You could make it 0 0.05 um, if you want to have a bit more control over the volume. And uh, I've set the default value to one so that it's not starting at zero. So when we go to change the volume, it doesn't suddenly mute and then go down. So I've set the default value to one. Remember, I also set the, um, the minimum size of this to be 200. Otherwise, it's really tiny. I'm not sure why it's changed there, but it's, oh, that's, sorry, that's the minimum size there. So if I change that, you see it's really tiny and it doesn't quite work. So change that to 200. Um, I can close this animation play. I don't need that down the bottom anymore. And then with this slider, same deal. Now I've got nodes and we've got, I can actually um, disconnect that one. I've got this thing called value changed. So when this signal happens for this H slider, uh, it should connect already should already be connected to this one here. On H slider, value changed. This is a throwback to an earlier video now. We're going to use music volume, the value. So the value is going to be anywhere between zero and one. So let's have a look at what this function looks like in here, just in case you didn't do it last time. I had variable music DB equals one, variable sound DB equals one on line 17 and 18 of the sound player script. And I had a function called change music volume value. Now in here, we only had one line that said music underscore DB equals linear to DB value. We didn't have anything else, but I've gone ahead and added this line now, music player dot volume DB equals music DB. So this will now assign the music player's volume to be that. Now the sound player is identical. So if I go to the sound slider, and I go to, don't worry about this one, it shouldn't be connected. I connected the wrong one. And I go to here, sound player dot change. That's wrong. Oh, it's down here. Sound player dot change sound volume value. And so that function uh, looks like this. 
change sound volume value, sound dB equals linear 2 dB value. Now you might think, oh, I've missed a line here. No, I haven't, because if you remember, we're creating new sound stream players and deleting them when they're not needed rather than having a whole lot. Whereas the music one can stay there. It's always going to be playing music. So down here, this is where I add that line. So after we add the sound into the scene, we set it sound to be the current sound dB value, play the sound, when it's finished it cue freeze and that's done so that's the audio player this video may not have been what you're expecting for creating a title screen but i think that this here rather than creating something very specific you want to create something that works for you and have a look at different tutorials out there i mean you can follow mine here if there's any particular values that you want to know uh, what i used in here uh, let me know uh, and i can i can but like when this is done, I'll probably post the whole example online for free that you can have a look at the source code um, and, and take away what you want from it. But um, while we're going through this, if there's any questions, just post them in a comment below and I'll get back to you.